Okay, mentioned last week that we would jump into some shepherd's pie, and I think we're going to do that in just a few minutes. Got all the ingredients together. You know, it's a little bit of a misnomer to call this shepherd's pie, because really what we're making is a cottage pie. If you go back to the roots of shepherd's pie, it was actually made with minced lamb. I'm not using ground lamb today, so um, we're going to call this one shepherd's pie the USA way, but when in reality it is actually cottage pie because it's made with beef. So we're going to put that together. I'll come back in just a moment and show you some of the ingredients. Okay, so you're going to see the cauliflower is there. That's not part of the shepherd's pie. We're going to roast that cauliflower, but basically um, we're going to use a very lean ground beef. I'm going to be making some mashed potatoes that we'll use as the crust for the shepherd's pie. Um, I've got some mixed vegetables back there. I generally only use like peas and carrots, but they only had the uh, peas, carrots, and corn mixture, so I went ahead with that. Actually, green beans in there too, so it's going to be full of veggies. It'll be good. We have flour. That's going to act as our thickening agent. I have an onion that we will chop up. Some minced garlic. We've got beef broth that will actually be the base. I have a teaspoon each of thyme, rosemary, and parsley. I've got my mixture of salt, pepper, and garlic powder, a little bit of red wine, and what I didn't set out here was the Worcestershire. So um, we'll just do a dash of that also for some flavor. But anyway, this will start to come together and we'll start videoing once we're doing the prep work. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is put a few turns of olive oil in a pan. Not too much, we just want enough so that our onions do not stick. And basically, when I'm cooking onions in a dish, it's not that I don't like them raw, because they're really good, but um, you know, definitely cooking them down in a dish like this is just a little more savory, a little nicer. We like it better, so uh, we are going to cook down these onions. Once we do, we'll add the garlic just long enough to get it fragrant, add the seasonings, and then add our meat and cook that down, and it'll make for a very nice show. We'll be Okay, so I've sweat down these onions, browned them just a little bit because we like that beautiful color, and I'm going to add just a little bit of garlic, probably about a teaspoon and a half of minced garlic to the mix. I've already added salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I like a nice flavorful show. We're just going to do this long enough to let that garlic get fragrant. I am going to go ahead and add my rosemary, my thyme, and my parsley flakes and stir them in to toast those a little bit also. Looks very interesting, but immediately you get this wafting, beautiful smell of those seasonings. And now with my ground beef in place, I'm going to begin to chop that up and incorporate it into the mix. So, not too bad. Get it all nice and chopped up. like to do that. Get all the meat out of this little contraption. I don't know what I was doing before those things. Turn this around. I'm just going to fry this out. Once your beef is browned, then we will come back and I'll show you the next step of what we need to do. Okay, our meat is pretty well fried up. Very little oil in it because it was a very lean cut, but I did have that olive oil there, so there's some of that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is, just in a small way, Deglaze that pan just a little bit with about a half a cup of red wine. And I usually use something dry, like um, a Cab Cabernet Sauvignon or a Pinot, Pinot Noir, just to um, basically deglaze the pan. The alcohol cooks off and that beautiful red wine. Oh, so delightful. We like it. It's already smelling like a dream. You cannot go wrong with me by putting wine in pretty much anything. You didn't get that memo by now, but it's the truth. Okay, so don't look at my disgusting flour container because it's all crusty. But to this, once that wine cooks off a little bit, I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of flour, maybe two and a half. Looks nice. Get my broth over here close, and what I'm going to do is stir that flour in. You're like, what is this crazy person doing? That's okay. I have done this a couple of times before. It works out pretty good. All right, now, in essence, what you are going to do is you are going to make kind of a thick beef stew. And that's what we want. That flour acts as your thickening agent. You see how thick that is, very thick. 
I'm going to add a little more because I don't want it quite that thick. We're still adding other components. All right, so right now it's just beef and onions, and really, with a little Worcestershire, you could use that as your base, and that's fine. If you're not big on the veggies, don't do it. I don't care. Still a little thick. A little more of that. Our beautiful soup base. Got our mashed potatoes prepared on the side. And I will get back to you shortly on that. I'm going to turn this burner down to about a medium and just make sure we have a beautiful mixture to go forward from here. All right. Now, while it's cooking away, just a little bit of Worcestershire, not much. Half a tablespoon, maybe. Now, not to be old grossier, but y'all know how I am. Definitely there. Yes, I'm going to use a bag, just the you know, regular small 12 ounce bag of mixed vegetables in this case. Add away and stir those in. This becomes the base for your shepherd's pie. Now again, all along, all of this is really up to your preferences and your taste. So as you're doing this, add some salt, taste it. If you think it's not enough, add some more. If you think it's too much, you know, my recommendation is don't go crazy because a lot of this stuff, the broth and, and that kind of thing, they have a lot of salt in them. But basically, this is what we're after. A very thick stew, if you think it's too thick, Add a little more of your broth. If it's not salty enough, add a little more salt. But you're going to be very surprised at what you come up with with this. We'll come back when it's time to reconstruct, or de deconstruct, reconstruct, actually construct the shepherd's pie, the cottage pie. All right, so I generally use a piping tool so that I can get that mashed potatoes right there on that beautiful pie. And it doesn't take too long this way. You just kind of give it a little more flump than womp, if you know what I mean. They're just going to tear it up and eat it anyway, so it doesn't much matter. But yeah, I just use a piping tool and I put it in the corner of a Ziploc bag. It doesn't have to take anything you know, super fancy. But basically, it looks a little better than just a... Uh, if I got enough mashed potatoes to get it done. Looks like maybe I might have to really force them in there. You know, you ain't got to be fancy. And uh, just use a spoon and spoon them out. Because in the end of it, wow, I am like right at the end, ain't I? In the end of it, they're just going to tear it up anyway. So, well, I'm going to go see if i got some more mashed potatoes in this pot to make at least the casserole look decent. But other than that, we will come back together and I will show you after we plate it all up with the shepherd's pie. We're going to have a nice salad and some roast cauliflower. And we'll be back to share it with you in just a few minutes. All right, so one thing I didn't mention, and I just took this out of the oven, but I absolutely love to take my torch and just run it over the peaks of the mashed potatoes, just give them a little bit of a toast, make them sexy. Look at that! Look how sexy they are. Oh, so amazing. We roasted that cabbage, and we're going to plate this up in just a moment, let you take a look at it. It is going to be a meal to die for. So, at any rate, we'll come right back and plate it all. Okay, so it's time to give it a taste. But now, what I'd like you to do, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Come back and see me because we're going to be doing stuff like this all the time, at least three times a week. So, um, hopefully you'll stick around with us and enjoy it. Um, it's going to be good. Good time for all to be had. The other thing is... Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got kind of the long hair thing going here. I've got 90s hair right now. It's at that awkward face. So um, I'm, I'm getting votes from friends. Let me know how you like it. Should I buzz it again and go back to being like pseudo military, whatever? Anyway, um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think. But we're going to give this a try because I've got this amazing shepherd's pie. And I, I'm just going to let's come in close. Just take just take a look. Beautiful roasted cauliflower. Mm. This is comfort food du jour. It is so good. 
so you definitely want to give this a try. I don't know if I mentioned it to you, but I bake the shepherd's pie at 375 for about a half hour and then 15 minutes on 400 just to kind of, you know, make the top a little bit browner. So give it a shot. Super easy. You saw how I put it together and I'll make sure I put the recipe in the um, in the comments down below and I'll also stick it in my blog so you can go over there and take a look too. So anyhow, we will talk to you soon. Hey, have a good one. Bruce, my hair make me look sexy or creepy.